song has trying to find that out. <coughs> Anyway, he, he called, what? 
What? <laughs> so finally got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he prayed for me because I had been having, so we won't go into that, but he prayed for me and if I can get this out, in less than, less than an hour, I would say closer to 30 minutes, I, I felt my blood sugar level. I knew things were right in my body again. And I couldn't thank God enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just almost shouted. <laughs> but I said, <coughs> I just afraid to knock my silly self down. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do the shouting stuff. But in my heart, I was shouting. Amen. And I, it's been good ever since. Praise God. So I, I can't thank God enough for what he did. And I can't thank our pastor for being the man of God he is. You know, we, we all have, have people we consider prayer war, warriors that if we got them to pray for us, we know that it's going to go further than the seat and it's going to go to the throne gonna, and, yeah. and God will answer. Anybody else? I want to give a little a praise about, I don't know if any of y'all know, follow the story about little Blake Sampson, mm -hmm. the one that Charles Brooks beat that little boy almost to death. He is now living with his grandmother and they are, he is actually starting to breathe a little bit on his own. And they said that that, that baby would never breathe on its own. But he's, they said he's taken five breaths on his own and then he, he starts getting a little agitated. Mm -hmm. But you know, that, that is from the prayer warriors. That, there are people all over the world praying for that little boy. And he's actually, I do believe that that little boy is going to be able to get off of that trach and breathe on his own. I think God's going to heal him. It's amazing. Thank God's going to heal him. And Charles Brooks's case is coming up, his trial is coming up in May, and I hope they put him under that chair. <laughs> well, if we all got what we deserved, wouldn't any of us be here tonight? That's true, that's true. And I tell you what, if there's ever a time we need to pay, pray for those that are ignorant in God's Word, it's now. We really do. Uh, you always want to hear praise reports when God's answer prayers. We know that God answers our prayers, but it just kind of builds us up a little bit when we hear it, not necessarily in our life, but working in our church family life. I got one thing to say. God is good. Amen. All the time. All, All the time. God is good. God is good. Trials and tribulations, He's still good. He don't leave us like the people do. You know, one time, you know, one time I asked the Lord to take cigarettes away from me, take it out of my mouth, because I've tried so many times. I like, that was like two or three years ago. And He did. I hadn't had a cigarette in two years, three years, near going into three years. And I have no desire for the cigarettes. I ate that hard candy though, 100 miles an hour, but I don't want a cigarette. The Lord did that too. Yeah, yeah I, I got a real good friend that the Lord took cigarettes away from him. He laid it down. He said he, and that was years and years ago, he said, I've never had a desire for another. 60 years, over 60 years, I've been smoking. In 2001, I guess it was. Oh, oh, one. I won't go into all the details, but I smoked. I've been praying for years for God to deliver me, but I still, you know, I didn't smoke much, but I still did smoke. But one night during a, so I had a lot of pain for a reason that <coughs> I won't go into. But I was really in bad pain. I sat up and I got the first thing he wants a cigarette. And when I, I was trembling, when I started to light it, Lord, tell me if you won't light that, I'll be there every time you need me. That was an old one, and I've never had a desire. I can't stand the smell of them. I, <clears throat> when God delivers you, He delivers you. Amen. So I understand what Miss Patsy's saying. God is good, so good to us. Amen. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know if it's in Sunday school or wherever, but for the way we live and the way we act, does God know that we love Him? 182? 182. I think, I think with all of these testimonies, 
that song right here is going to mean something to all of us. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> such a, an eye-opening experience and uh, and the Lord has shown me a lot of things but there's one thing that I noticed uh, while I was studying and uh, you know we've talked before about uh, people who believe in the rapture of the church and there's people who believe that the church is going to be raptured before the tribulation there's people who believe that the church is going to be raptured in the middle of the tribulation after three and a half years there are people who believe that the rapture takes place after the tribulation. Well, there, there is a, a rapture that does take place after the tribulation, but it's a rapture of the, of the people who have survived Antichrist. It, it's going to be a rapture at that time. But uh, I'm fully convinced and believe that the church is going to be raptured out before the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. I do believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And I want to look at some scriptures and here's why I'm so convinced now. 
you know, used to when we had talked about these things, I said, well, there's three different ideas. There's three different uh, uh, theories on, on these things, and you just kind of read into them, and you pick out your, your, the one that you agree with, and that's kind of one you stick to. But what I noticed uh, as I studied Revelation, if you don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, none of it makes any sense at all. Amen. I mean, it don't make any sense. It, what you read and, and, and what you're, you can tell, he's not talking to the church. The church is not here when it's going on. So I want to look at some scriptures. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to the book of First John, or St. John, excuse me. St. John, and, and I may have some people, I don't know how much time I'm going to take with this, because uh, there, there's just, uh, I mean, I got, I mean, these are just jot down notes that, that uh, I mean, these are front and back pages, and uh, but there's something that I really did notice uh, in St. John chapter 14. If you'll turn there and just put your finger there, we're going to be looking at verses 1, one 2, and 3. And it's a very familiar scripture. And I want you to turn over to 1 Thessalonians. And I want you to put your finger there. And you'd think I'd have these all marked up in my Bible, but I don't. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, 1 chapter, uh, Thessalonians chapter 4 is a scripture that we, we read a lot and at gravesides. We read them a lot at gravesides. And, and it's a shame that uh, a lot of the things that we do for funerals and about the Lord coming back, we don't preach a whole lot on because it reminds people of that. It reminds people of, of a funeral and, and it brings back a sad feeling. So I want us to look at uh, chapter 14 of St. John. Who has that? Would you read the first three verses for me, please? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. St. John. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now notice this. This is Jesus telling us he's going away, but he's going to come back and get us. I like this, don't you? Well, 1 Thessalonians, if somebody has it, 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, if I could get somebody to read verses 13 through 18, please. So I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye are sorrow not, even as others which have not, no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we may say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You say, okay, what do these two scriptures have in common? I want you to, and it didn't dawn on me, uh, but, but I want you to look in verse 1 of John, that, that keep your Bible like this so you can look at both of these, okay? So you can turn from one to the next. Because that's what we're going to be looking at here. Because this is Jesus Christ talking about his coming back. He's talking about rapture of the church, taking us where he is, where he has a place prepared for us. Okay? And he's telling this to his apostles so that they can share it with the church that they're fixing to create when he's gone. The church that they're fixing to pastor when he's gone. And, and so if you look at this in, in verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Okay? He said he uses that word trouble. He, so he's telling us, don't worry, right? Don't don't let the things that you're going to see. Let them, don't let the things that, that you're going to. Now, now you got to remember, Jesus is not just talking to these twelve. He's talking to us too. And and it's plain in the scripture in the red letter version. You can tell a lot of times that he said things to them. They had no clue what he was talking about. 
For, so whose benefit for, was it for? It was for their future benefit because the Holy Ghost was going to help them remember what he said. And it's for our benefit because we're filled with the Spirit too and we're allowed to remember what he says. And so he, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Now look over in, in 1 Thessalonians in verse 13, and I want you to see the comparison. Although if you just look at these two on its own, you think, well, they ain't talking about the same subject. Well, they are. They're talking about going to heaven. Amen. They're talking about Christ coming back. Paul goes into a little more, bit more detail because he's talking about the dead and everything that we would have comfort one another at a funeral or the, at, a, at, a, at the side of a dead person and we, to comfort one another with this hope, this thing that we have. And so in verse 13 he says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Why? So you don't that you sorrow not. Jesus said, Don't be troubled. Paul said, Don't sorrow. Okay, so they're very similar words. Now also in verse 1 uh, of St. John, look at what he says. You believe in God, believe also in me. So he says you need to believe uh, so you don't be troubled. Believe uh, faith in God helps us to not be troubled. Amen? So look in verse 14 over in 1 Thessalonians. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then also if we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? So he uses the same word. If you don't want to be troubled, believe. If you don't want to sorrow, believe. You see that? It's all concerning the same occasion. Jesus is telling it in his own words that he's coming. Paul is telling us from the Holy Spirit what the Holy Spirit instructed him to say, which are the words that Christ wants us to know. And so this is, these, are, these are beautiful things. So these two scriptures, although they're so far apart, said by, by one by Christ and one by Paul, but all through the Holy Spirit of God. Now look again in St. John verse 1, because I only got three verses here. And it, and it says, he uses the word God and me. You believe in God, believe also in me, is what he said. Now look over in, uh, in verse uh, 14. Uh, again in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 for if you believe that Jesus died and rose again so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him now did you notice that do you see that who does he say here is going to bring them with him God okay so he's telling us believe in God believe in me why is he saying that because he knows all the confusion of today caused by the trinity of God and Jesus is trying to tell us, yeah, I'm Jesus, and yes, there's God, and yes, I'm God, and yes, I'm Jesus. He, he, it's not a matter of confusion. It's a matter of who he is. It's a matter of identity. It's a matter of, of, of God being able to be in existence in more than one place at one time. Amen? It's the omnipresence of God. And it wasn't about uh, anything for God to be in heaven and be on earth. It wasn't anything for God to be in the spirit and, and uh, uh, be on Christ and be in a man. It's all the same. It's one spirit. One Lord, one God, one faith, one baptism, one spirit. And he's in all of us who know God. Amen. It's all one. And so he, he says in this, uh, in verse 14 over here, he says, believe in Jesus and, and God will bring him. Amen. So it's about believing. It's about trouble. Do not trouble and believe and believe in and what, what you believe in. You believe God. You believe in me. In 1 Thessalonians, it's don't sorrow. Believe Jesus and God. Okay? Is this making as clear as mud? Amen. Verse 2 of St. John. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, now look at this. I would have told you it's important that we see what Jesus told us. And he said, if, if this wasn't real, I wouldn't have said it. But no, now that you know that I'm God, I can do anything I say I'm going to do. Now, he wasn't arrogant. Jesus was not arrogant here. He was being honest and he was the truth. Amen. What he said, his words were true. And although he wasn't doing these things at the time, he had to die before all this could come about. He had to die and the church had to be formed. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit had to be form, uh, formed and the churches had to be formed before there could be a rapture or a resurrection of the church and the dead. Amen. Amen. 
that had to, all this had to take place. So he's giving us a prelude, and Paul is telling us how to deal with death. Now, what is the last enemy going that's going to be destroyed? Does anybody know what the scripture says it is? There's one last enemy. Death. Death is the last enemy to be destroyed. And so it, it's going it's to be here until the end. Amen. Death is going to be here until the very end when there will be no more death. Death will end with the, the with people being judged and thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Death dies there. Amen. Everybody left after that will never die. And so he, he showed us then, he said, I told you, if I had not told you, uh, it, uh, this, is, this is why I told you this, this is true. I go to prepare this place for you. Now look, in verse 15 of uh, 1 Thessalonians, he said, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Jesus told us, he is the word, and he told us, and Paul says, I say this by what? The word of the Lord. Who's he talking about? By, by Jesus Christ. I'm telling you this by Jesus Christ, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain <coughs> unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So Paul gives us even more information that not only is this going to be a resurrection of dead people, it's going to be a resurrection of living people also. And so this is this is the resurrection or the rapture of the of the church that he's talking about. Now, let's look at some more of that. And so in verse three, after he says, "Don't be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me, uh, because I told you." Now look again in verse three, and he says, "I will come again." We just sung that song, "Rise Again," and in, in the last part of the verse of that song, he said, "I will come again," didn't he? In that song, it was a beautiful song, and it's a relation of, of, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that He's going to come at the resurrection of the of the rest of us. Amen. He's going to come, and, and so it shows that I will come again. He said, "I will come again." And then looking again in verse uh, fifteen of of uh, First Thessalonians, He said, "For this <clears throat> we say unto the word by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain." Until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them <coughs> which are asleep. So he says he's talking about the coming of the Lord in Thessalonians. He's talking about Jesus coming back. Okay, so he said in, in uh, John chapter verse three, uh, chapter fourteen, verse three, I'm coming again. He also Paul re, re, uh, restates this, uh, and, and, but he calls it the coming of the Lord. Jesus uses the first person. Paul uses the third person. So he says, uh, Jesus said, I'm coming again. And Paul says about, talks about the coming of the Lord. Now look again in verse 3. And it says, <clears throat> when he said, and, and uh, I'm going to prepare, prepare, uh, excuse me, prepare a place for you. I will come again and what? Jesus. I'm going to receive you. Yeah. Now this is where it gets really good to me. Because Paul, when he's talking to us about the dead in Christ, he don't stop with the dead in Christ. And he says, he says, and <clears throat> they shall be alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord and shall not prevent them which are asleep. And so he says, and look in verse 17. Uh, let me read the rest of that. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now Jesus don't mention that, if you'll notice that. But this Paul does. Now look at this. Then we, we which are alive and remain shall be what? Woo That's what rapture means. Uh -huh. About everybody, the people who don't get I can't understand why anybody would not believe in the rapture of the church. It just, it just don't register with me how anybody can <coughs> read the scripture and say there's no such thing as a rapture. There, did you know there's people that believe that we were saved and we die and we stay dead? Well, that's it. There are people that really believe that. Well, why believe that? <coughs> Where's the hope in that? <coughs> Tell me. Where's the hope? There ain't none. I mean, if you don't just live in this life and you're not going to have another, just have a party here. Yeah. That's what most people are doing mm -hmm. because they're not thinking about the next life. But in verse 17, he said, 
those which are alive and remain shall be called up, not just called up, but how? Together. We're all going to go at one time. The dead first, and the, the, right after the dead raise up, it, this is going now listen to me, this ain't going to be an event that takes place over a period of time. This is in a moment in the twinkling of night, which is in another place. We're just comparing these two right now. But it, it says, that, so the, when the voice of the archangel and the trump of God sound, boom, the dead in Christ are going to rise. Amen. And then he said, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. You want to know, you want to know when you're going to see mama again? <laughs> right then. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now let me tell you, he's got the souls already. They are, they are spiritual bodies right now. He has them. Now, some people believe they're in a place called paradise. That may be true. That's where Jesus told the thief on the cross he's going to be with him in paradise. But on this day, he's going to put body and soul back together. Amen. Amen. Because, see, the change that the Bible tells us about, guess when it happens? Right then. Amen. He ain't going to wait. He ain't going to be around the bush. He ain't going to get us up there and say, i got to remodel, y'all. When, you, when the dead come out of the grave, they're going to come out fully resurrected and they're going to come out fully incorruptible and their soul is a pow going to be right there with them and they're going to behold them with the eyes that they have now. Mm -hmm. And so will we. Woo! I don't know about y'all, but I get happy thinking about that. When I know Joe broke that no time how many years ago, he said, with these eyes, mm -hmm. I will see him. With these lips, I will speak to him. And we, I just read in the back of the book, we're going to look him in the face. Amen. Hallelujah. That is what it means to be a Christian. That's what it means to be a child of God. These are the, this is the benefit. Eternal life. He talks about it all through the, the New Testament. Jesus does. He just keeps saying eternal life. He, believe in me, I'll give you eternal life. I'm going to give you eternal life. It, it's just over. This is what it's going to look like. Amen. Now listen to me. This is only for those who believe in me and God. This is only for those who are filled with the Spirit. It's going to happen so fast, we've got to have some way to get it out of here quick. That's what the Spirit's going to do. That's the last thing the Spirit's going to do for us before we depart from this earth is make us faster than Superman. Amen. Amen. It's going to quicken. He's going to quicken our mortal body. A lot of people don't even think that. So he said, I'm going to come again. I'm going to receive you. There he said, the coming of the Lord, and we will be caught up, which is receiving him. And look at this in verse 3 in, uh, in St. John. And I will go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself. Why? That where I am, you can be there Two. Now let me ask you a question. What is your goal? Where do you want to go? And we, we're bad about saying, oh, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Jesus said, say this, I want to go where you are. I want to go to my Savior. I want to go behold him. I want to go look at him. I want to go touch him. I want to go talk to him. Why? Because if it wasn't for him, wouldn't none of us be there. Amen. 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 And so he said, he said, so I'm going to come again. I'm going to receive you unto myself. Where, that where I am, you can be there also. Now look at verse 17 again. And he says, now look at this. And he says, so you're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds for what purpose? To meet him where? Yeah. And there. Now how are we going to do that? Somebody said, well, you ain't going to fly. Oh, yes, I am. Amen. Amen. You know what the Bible says? When, the, when Jesus ascended, his disciples watched him ascend into the clouds. He was flying. Not like Superman. He was probably looking down. He was going up. The, the Father above was pulling his son back to glory. Listen to me. The son of all glory is going to pull his children up too. And we're going, to meet, we're going to meet him in the air. But that ain't the best part. That, it don't stop there. 
I get fogged up and can't say nothing. It says, and so shall we ever be with him. Hallelujah. No expiration date. Etern that's what eternal life means with him forever. Hallelujah. Eternal death means without him forever. So these two scriptures right here coincide. They, they, they speak of the same thing. They use lots of different words. And if you don't look at it and put them together, you think, wow, Jesus said that. And this is what Paul said about dead people and people who live in Christ. That there's going to be a time when we're going to be caught away. Now, where did he get that stuff? How did he write this? How did he know that stuff? He certainly didn't learn it from the Pharisees. They believed in the resurrection, but they never know times that we're going to meet Jesus in there. Amen. So how did he know? The Holy Spirit revealed to him. Paul had been to a point in his life. Now, this is what we all need to know. You want Jesus to reveal more of himself to you? You want to learn more about him? Then obey him. As you obey the Lord Jesus Christ, he will begin to reveal more and more and more. How do you think Enoch walked with God and was no more? Think about that. Do you believe that scripture? Do you believe that Enoch walked with God and he was in such a personal walk with God that God just took him? That's what the scripture said. He was not for God to him. Amen. He's going to take us that way too. But in the meantime, we need to learn more and more and more and more about him. We need to understand what we read. We need to understand what's coming down the path so we can quit worrying about this world. Listen, listen to me. It ain't going to make it. We're, we're sitting in something that's, that's going to burn. You know, the Bible don't say it burns. It says it dissolves. There's a difference. It, it disintegrates. The air that we breathe is going to catch on fire. The elements are going to burn with a fervent heat and the earth will dissolve. And it'll be nothing. Gone. Gone. That song. Gone. The earth will be that way. Gone. Listen to me. We don't need to worry about this earth. We need to get ready for the new one that's coming. Amen. Now, there's a lot of things that, that we get, get wrong in our thinking. We somehow think, well, we're going to leave this earth and we're going to go to, to heaven. We're going to be there forever. The heaven that's there now is not the one we're going to be forever in. Yeah. There's going to be a brand new one of them too. You know what the last act of that heaven's going to be? The white throne judgment. The last act that happens there. And God's going to say, we're not using this heaven because this heaven has been corrupted by those that have been brought to my throne where I've had to cast them into hell. I don't want people to know. I want people to remember this. I'm going to give you a new earth and I'm going to bring a new heaven down and I'm going to come live with you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Do y'all believe in this stuff? Yes. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to make everything brand stinking new. And Isaiah, a long, long time ago, Isaiah chapter 65, and he said when the new heaven and the new earth appears, guess what's going to happen? We won't remember this one again. That's when it's going to be really heaven. Why would you want to? Why would you want to? We wouldn't have a place of no more tears and sorrows, would we? If we could remember this place. <laughs> Praise God. Resurrection. The resurrection is coming. I'm going to read y'all a couple more scriptures and we can, then we're going to close. And, and I may do some more of this. There is just so much in the scripture that points to the resurrection of the, of the, of, uh, the pre-tribulation of resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
Another, another one we read at gravesides and funerals. <coughs> I'm not going to read it all. Look, just look at verses uh, 51 52. Look at what it says. It says, yeah, let me get over here. And Jesus, uh, Paul is explaining uh, the, the resurrection of the body is explained in verses 35 through uh, 50. And then in, in, uh, in 51 and 52, he gives us what, it, what we call the victory over death. But I want, what I want you to look at is, Behold, I show you a what? A mystery. A mystery, he says. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. And wh when he says, I want to show you a mystery, and I want you to hear something. The rapture of the church is never mentioned in the Old Testament. You know why? They didn't know what the church was. There was no church in the Old Testament. There was no prophecy of the rapture of a church in the Old Testament. And Paul, when he saw this and he began to understand this and he got filled with the Holy Spirit and he began to see the development in the, of the churches that God himself was adding to and bringing people into and he saw the power of God in these people, he said, I, I want to show you something. I've, I've seen. God has revealed this to me. I want to, sh behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. <coughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about when the resurrection happened, and I told y'all a while ago, when, when, when we, the, the people, the dead people rise and the live people lie, right, listen to me. We're not physically capable of going up there. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? If you take off and go up there right now, me and Brother Gary would look like the abominable snowman that's been frozen in an ice cap for a million years before we got too high up. You get in a jet airplane at the altitude they fly, you know what happens if you're sitting on the wing? Don't believe them shows that show people sitting on the wing of those airplanes way up there. They'd be frozen solid. We're not capable. So in order for that, we have to be changed to go there. We're not going to be the same as we are right now. We're going to be changed so we can go there with Him. When Jesus ascended, when He resurrected, they couldn't tell by looking at Him, but He was changed already. When He came up out of that grave, He was changed already. You know what? They couldn't have killed Him again with nothing. As a matter of fact, nobody even seen Him except who He wanted to see Him. Amen. Amen. He was changed. When he ascended up, he didn't have to worry about freezing. He didn't have to worry about nothing. He was going up in the air. And he said, well, I'm going to take you up there. I'm going to catch you up in the air. And you're going to stay with me forever. Now, let me ask you a question. All the, the spaceships and the, and the satellites we got, have they ever seen Jesus? Why not? Where he went, the way further than they go, we got a telescope that's going light years and taking pictures of stuff and finding galaxies and things that we never even knew existed. He went right through them. <laughs> Amen. You know why I know? He's above all that. All of his creation is below him. He's above all that. And he got there quick. And he's going to come back just as quick as he got there. Amen. And, and so he says, I have this mystery I need to show you. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now look, he said, this is what he said. In a moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. We got to get ready to take a flight. Now we get, we get back now. But when he takes us up, we're going to get on board. We're going to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. Amen. There ain't going to be no looking back. There ain't going to be waiting until I get this. If you do that, you won't go. Amen. And so these are the things that the resurrection is coming in which the Lord comes for his church, taking to her to his father's house. That's where he said in John chapter 14, verse 3, he said, I'm taking you to a place where I'm preparing a mansion for you, and I'm taking you that where I am so you can be there also. And when you get there, I got a house waiting. Now, you know what the new uh, 
uh, Bibles and the new interpretation said they don't want to say we're going to have a mansion over there. Room. We got we got to minimize everything over there so we can maximize everything here. Amen. I want my mansion, don't you? And there's going to be plenty of room there. Amen. There's going to be plenty of room there. He's going to have plenty of room for us. Amen. And so, he, so he's going to take us to his father's house. And now his second coming is when he reigns here a thousand years. So a lot of times when people are reading in this stuff, they say, this don't make no sense. Because some people believe, if you believe in the, in the mid-tribulation or the post-tribulation, then you've got, to, you've got to believe that we're here when Antichrist shows up. And then if you believe that, uh, 2 Thessalonians don't make much sense to you then. Because 2 Thessalonians tells us that there's somebody that's got to be removed before he can show up. Amen. Somebody got to be taken out before he can show up. Now who would that be? <laughs> I figure it's going to be the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one keeping everything at bay. He is he's the one that's held everything up. He's the one with the reason Antichrist can't show up because the Holy Ghost will not dwell in Antichrist. Amen? Antichrist is not going to have the Holy Ghost. He's going to have the devil. Amen? And so we gotta, we got to be prepared for that. And so let me read you this scripture, and I read it to you before. And uh, I'm going to read it to you just this one more time. Remember ye not, this is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Remember ye not that when I, <coughs> I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So he says, now you know there's something holding somebody back that's going to have to be revealed. He ain't talking about Jesus. No. Jesus has already came. And Jesus has already been revealed and, and told who he was. For the mystery, here we go with the mystery. We have the, we have the mystery that was talking about the resurrection a while ago, and now we have this mystery that Paul is telling us about again of iniquity. And he says that it is already at work now. Can you see the development of the anti Antichrist society? Can you see it in the works right now? You better believe it. You can see it. You can see people hungry for a man to show up and make everything all better for them. We want a man. That's why Jesus, the Jews didn't believe in Jesus. They wanted a man. They wanted a king, a man they could look at that was going to lead them in war. And that ain't what they got, so they rejected him. The world is ripe right now for a man to show up and say, I've got a solution for this problem. I've got a solution for this problem. I've got a solution for the Middle East. I've got a solution for the oil. I got a solution for electric cars. I got a solution, and all the country's gonna come together and say, This guy is smart. Are we ready for that now? Mm -hmm. The world's ready for him right now. What's holding him back? Why ain't he coming? He said, Well, it ain't got time yet. Well, that's true. But there's something here that he can't overcome. Do not sell the church short. Do not sell the power that exists in you short. He can't overcome you. Did you know a devil can't inhabit you? You know why? Because there's somebody stronger, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He can't kick him out. Right. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. So Antichrist can't deal with the church. Uh -huh. God ain't going to let him. He's not even going to have the opportunity. 
And yet we know persecution is going to come. We know it's going to be getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, we ain't saying nothing yet. If we don't tell, start telling everybody it's okay to be a queer or homo, we, we're already dirt. We can't do that. We won't do that. Because thus says the word of God that it is an abomination to him. I don't care what they say up there in Washington, D.C. I don't care what books they write. It ain't okay. It's an abomination to our God. And this nation is fixing to suffer not only for those abominations, but for the murder of the innocents that they have murdered year after year after year after year. Babies. And they have blood, and it's innocent blood. And there will be vengeance and wrath from Almighty God. Hell will fall on this earth because of it. And they're going to be in the midst of it. And they're going to be wondering why. What did we do wrong? God help us to be that church. To be that wall. To be that wall that's holding that thing back. Why, why do we need to? Because I got children, I got grandkids, I got kids. I don't want them to be lost. He's given us opportunity to show them and tell them you can't do that. Show them in the Word of God that you can't do that. These people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be those people. Amen. It's written plain as day. Amen. And so he, let me read the rest of this. I'm going to close. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, only he, who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So there's something, and, and, and it's, a, it's interesting to me, he uses the word he. Okay? Very interesting to me. Let me see what uh, John says, and then I'm going to close. John 16. It's a study we're in now about the Holy Spirit. John 16, verses 13 and 14. Now, I want, you to, I want you to count with me as I read this. How many times Jesus Christ refers to the Holy Spirit as, guess what? He. 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 Listen to this. <clears throat> Verse uh, 13, 14 of chapter 16 of St. John. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. You see that? Eight times. Who do you think he is? <laughs> the Holy Ghost. He is the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is taken out, Antichrist will show up. Amen. It cannot show up until he is taken out. To me, that is the most convincing and compelling ideal that, that that shows us that before Antichrist shall come, the church will be gone. Amen. And it says when he is out of, taken out of the way, and then, and then, everybody say, and then, Amen. shall that wicked, with a capital W, by the way, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume. He can't show up until he is taken out of the way. How can he be taken out of the way? Where does he live? Where does he live? He lives in us. So for him to be taken out, we got to go. That is our Lord. That is our Savior. That is what he has done for me and you. That's what he has given us. 
more power did you know? You say, well, I don't feel like I got much power. Do you know you're holding Antichrist at bay? Right now? We are. Until we're moved. Until we're removed. He cannot come. Amen. In the meantime, buckle up because Jesus did tell us that we'd live in a time of what? Great sorrow. Amen. Are we in that time now? Amen. We're not in the time of tribulation. We're in a time of great sorrow that leads up to that point. He's getting us ready to go, y'all. And, and the Bible tells us that as we see this time approaching, what do we need to do? We better buckle down and be diligent in our service for the glory of God better buckle down this time. We have never seen a time like this ever in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Some of you can look back 20 years, it was nothing like this, and it was bad then. You can look back 40 years, it was nothing like this, and it was still bad. You look back 50 years, and it wasn't even on the horizon that this stupidity was fixing to take over our world. Yeah. And yet, in 50 years, here it is. Full-blown idiocy. Evil has become good and all good has become evil. Just like Isaiah said it would. Prophecy is fulfilled before our eyes. And if we don't know what the book says, we'll never know that it's happening in front of us. We got to get ready, y'all. Any comments? I mean, the Bible says that God has not appointed us to wrath no. But to obtain salvation. In other words, deliverance. Right. Then in First Thessalonians, in First Thessalonians chapter one, in verse nine and ten, it talks about how you turn to God from idols. That's salvation. That's right. And then it says, and this is where we're at right now, after salvation to serve the living and true God. And that's what we're doing right now. We're living, waiting for the Lord to come. In this next verse, it says, and to wait for his son from heaven, uh -huh. whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus was, he was raised from the dead. And then it says, which delivered us from the wrath to come. That's right. So the tribulation period is the wrath of God to come, and we won't be here. Pre-tribulation. Pre-tribulation. And, and I'm going to tell you, when I made up my mind, this is it. And I looked at these scriptures, and I got a bunch, a bunch more. There's lots more. There's bunches and bunches of them. And they got a, people who believe in three and a half years tribulation, seven year tribulation, they're not reading the same book. They're, they're promoting an idea and proving their idea by using, pulling out scriptures and proving it. When you look at the scriptures, it's plain that we're going to be out of here. Amen. We're going to be out here. And when, you, when we start studying Revelation, I'm going to keep bringing it up to you and showing you how you can tell the church ain't here. Right. Church ain't it's here. Out of here at it's all about Israel. Third chapter, third verse, uh, third chapter of Revelation, chapter uh, verse 7, the church is out of here. Church goes. Church got to go. And when the church goes, you go immediately to John's vision in heaven. He, he first writes letters to the churches from heaven, from, from his vision. He writes letters to the churches from Jesus Christ. And then immediately he goes in and the Lord starts showing him things. And when the fifth chapter of Revelation appears, and the book with the seven seals, that is the seven years of tribulation is in that book. And Jesus Christ is the only one worthy to open that book. When he opens those seals, the seven years of tribulation begin. Most of Revelation is taught in seven years. A lot of people miss that because the seven seals are the seven years of tribulation. And each seal has a different set of awful, terrible things that are going to happen. We're going to go over And it just scared the way out of you. And y'all, listen to me. I got to quit. Listen to me. A lot of the things are here now. Uh -huh. 
those demons that come are here. They just wait to be turned loose. Mm -hmm. They're already here. They're waiting. And God help those who don't go when the Lord comes. They're going to suffer greatly and see things they never, horrors they never thought they'd ever see before in their lives. I don't want my kids or my grandkids or my great grandkids or none of our kids to see that and be a part Amen. of that. Amen. Y'all, we got to be an example. We got to start telling them it's coming. It's coming. So y'all get the word out. I will, we're going to do Revelation. Like I said, don't know when. I may do a little bit more on this pre-tribulation because, like Brother Sam says, there's there's lots and lots of scriptures. And I want to try to show you the difference between the the rapture of the church and the and and uh, the and Jesus coming in the air and Jesus second coming and the differences in it. And I've got an outline made of the differences in it, so it's easy to recognize when the scripture is talking about that. Any questions, or comments? I got a the other day, well, on my <coughs> grandson's birthday, I went up there and took him to prison, and we. I was visiting with my son David. Now they, you know, they were saved last year. They are so hungry to know more and more about Jesus. Lindy has already read the Bible completely through, and now she started over. She's about a third of the way through again. And David, and, and of course, Zane was saved. He's eight years old. And David said, "Mom, he is asking me questions that I can't answer." And he's and and uh, their pastor is just fixing to start Revelations also. He preaches like you do. I mean, straight from the Bible, and he steps on toes. But Zane was asking a question. He said, well, Daddy, when we when we go to heaven, and he said, and Jesus is going to build us a mansion, will I still live with you and, with you and Mama? <laughs> and David said, I don't know. You know, so they're all studying. And, but this is an eight-year-old boy. Yeah. And he said, Daddy, I got some questions. <laughs> and I told David, I said, I do too. Mm -hmm. And so we sat there for the long, I probably got a couple of hours. While that Lindy and David and Zane was at a ball game, David and I are just sitting there talking about the Bible. And, and I've got a lot of questions too, so I'm going to yeah. be uh, Write you. them down and, and listen to me. I'm going to tell you this right now. When we start Revelation, you're going to hear me say, I believe a lot. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say yes or no to it. Because a lot of it is what I believe. It's what I've studied and what I've seen. And I, I can say that. And I, I highlight it in my journal. I write it in capital letters, I believe. So people who ever read that are going to know that's my fault. Okay? But there's a lot of information given in there that you have to, you have to look back into the Old Testament and see a lot of what they're talking about. Now, my plan is to not do so much of that as to is to see what we've got coming here and what it's going to look like. So, anyway, yeah, there's a lot of questions. And there's answers to those questions, too. And, and my main one, and, and you know, you we've talked about this before. You know, you say that we will, like you said, we'll get to see Mama. Mm -hmm. And I can see my little girl. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, and you say, but if we're, of course, I was married before, and if our husbands are there, we won't be married anymore. Mm -mm. We we won't know that they were our husband. Mm -mm. Then how will my little girl know that I was her mama? Because she's gonna know you. You're gonna be known as you're known in, in heaven. That's what the scripture teaches us. That you're gonna be known as you are known. You're gonna you're you're gonna be by your name, and people are gonna know you. Just we're gonna become like Jesus Christ. That's the best explanation I can get. And Jesus knew people. He knew things about people. He understood their hearts. He heard their thoughts. He heard, so they're going to know you. But there's not going to be marrying. There's not going to be husbands and wives in heaven. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that there, there may not even be genders. We're going to be more like the angels in, in that respect. Because there's not going to be marrying. There's not going to be giving in marriage. A lot of people have got this misconception that I'm going to go there and my husband's going to be and we're going to live happily ever. That's not the way this works. Because, see, we're not going to be married to a spouse. Either. We're going to be married to Jesus. Mm 
Amen. Amen. We will we will know one another, but the bonds that we had here will be gone. They will be so much greater. The love that you have, not just for Audra in heaven, but for everybody in heaven, is going to be magnified greater than you ever experienced love here. Because why? Because God is with us and He's love. And there's going to be a brotherly love and a companionship in heaven that, that's never been experienced nowhere ever. We can't even imagine how it's going to be because of that. I can't wait. And I've never wanted to teach you. I've told y'all. Well, y'all used to tell me how to teach right I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to. But I'm ready now. Well, Brother Gary, if she's not going to be my wife, who's going to make my decision? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that, we're going to go. We stand. We should please stand. Thank y'all for that. And, and y'all, I can see right now, when we get into Revelation, especially as we get up to chapter 5, we're really, y'all are really going to get into this. You really are. And Will we're you gonna... do that on both Sunday night and Wednesday? No, I'm going to do it just on Sunday nights. Sunday nights. Uh, because we want to finish our, because we don't need to lose sight of the Spirit, Holy Spirit in St. John. And I know I'm moving at a snail pace at that. We're going to really get deep into the work of the Holy Spirit because He's the key to us getting there. Okay. He is the key to us getting there. He is the key that's holding things back right now, that's keeping things. And once He is gone, and we're gone, then all that stuff can happen. So we're going to look at, at who is holding it back, and we're going to look at what He's holding back. Okay? So we'll just look at it that way. Okay. okay. We, got friend, we got a lot of friends that say, I want to come. Well, I hope they do. hope they do. Yeah. Right. Amen. We need to get, as a matter of fact, we, I told the youth, uh, I told Carrie and Randy, and they said they're going to come in here and uh, during this time. So I hope everybody gets a, a, a chance to hear uh, Revelation and get to examine it in detail. It's some spooky, spooky stuff. Amen. Brother Gary, would you dismiss us, please? Most precious Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for the privilege of being able to come to you. I ask that all the ones on the, on the prayer list be healed. Father. I ask that all the ones on the prayer list be just brought forward. We love you, Father. We thank you for your love and devotion. I ask that you be with each and every one here, take them home safely, bring them back safely. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.